What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and today we are 24 hours, less than 24 hours away actually, from Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3, easily one of the most anticipated Pro Tours of the year. Everybody loves modern, I think it's always the best performing in terms of views and even though we have some pretty weird metagames and I think we definitely see a lot of the player base kind of converge onto like the about a different set of like a handful of decks and the event's always awesome. It always ends kind of in a way that maybe you don't necessarily expect. And uh, decks like Tron end up performing and, and things like that. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the metagame breakdown. We're going to kind of go over, you know, when the event is exactly going on as well. And kind of giving some thoughts and opinions before we actually see any matches of Magic played. Of course, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you want to see more videos from me, where we do Pro Tour breakdowns when, you know, the Pro Tour comes around and all these major events, plus a lot of videos pertaining to the modern Pioneer format and other longer form videos, just a little bit of everything for everyone. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing, ring the notification bell, so you know when those videos get posted in the future, and it's a free, easy way to support me and my content. So, Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3 Metagame Breakdown. We have the deck list. The deck lists are in. The data is ready. The third Pro Tour of 2024 begins tomorrow on Friday at Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3, taking place June 28th through the 30th at MagicCon Amsterdam. Uh, 243 of the world's best Magic the Gathering players will bring their modern decks to compete for $500,000 in prizes, invitations to the World Championship, and a prestigious trophy, which the trophy does look awesome. If I ever get it, I am finding a way to... I'm finding a way to protect it forever. Like, I'm probably taking that thing, like, everywhere. Um, the field includes top players from regional championships, online qualifiers, and the previous Pro Tours, so we can look forward to an awesome weekend of high-level Magic. As kind of a side note, if you're looking to kind of get better at Magic and kind of, you know, get just try to get to this level or at least, you know, win RCQs and things like that, absolutely watching the Pro Tour, watching old matches and everything like that, understanding the context of what's going on and listening to, like, the commentators as well. They all do a really good job of, like, breaking things down and kind of explaining things that maybe you wouldn't have seen necessarily or you know when you think something is very obvious turns out it's not very obvious so just a side note just a very good way to kind of like level up your game in a way without actually having to play at that super high level the formats are modern horizons 3 booster draft on the morning of friday and saturday followed by modern five rounds afterwards on each of those days modern is also the top eight format on sunday Modern Horizons 3 infused a lot of unique, powerful build arounds into the modern format, resulting in the emergence of a brand new archetypes and an upheaval of the metagame. To put it lightly, the metagame looks completely different from what it did, you know, before the release of Modern Horizons 3. And all the theoretical stuff, all the, you know, early access and everything like that has finally, like, shown its face. And decks that we thought maybe would continue to be at the top of the metagame have absolutely fallen from grace so uh, to follow the action you can catch the stream at twitch.tv slash magic which begins at 11 a 11 a.m central european time on friday and saturday at 10 a.m central european time on sunday you can click the viewer's guide here for more information i'll have the whole article linked in the description down below so you can check it out yourself um but we will be going over you know just about everything in this article so the broadcast schedule, uh, 628 day one, you know, and uh, 629 day two are going to be draft and uh, modern, which will be eight rounds total between uh, the first day and the second day. So 16 rounds between both. Uh, you have a uh, 5 a.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Uh, Central time, which I'm assuming is the uh, Central European time, uh, six, um, assuming 6 p.m. like Japan time, I'm assuming JST, uh, I'm not entirely sure about that um but you know 5 a.m on the east coast i believe that means like 1 a.m on the west coast so the west coast people kind of get like screwed over if they want to like kind of watch but you know it is what it is considering i think most of the pro tour events end up happening somewhere in like the continental like united states or i guess continental north america i should say between like canada and like the u.s so it is what it is um but you know that's the broadcast schedule that's where you can find it twitch.tv slash magic uh maybe co-stream <laughs> maybe co-stream depending on uh 
depending on what we got going on. So the modern metagame breakdown. Modern is a non-rotating 60 card format that allows cards from expansion sets, core sets, and straight to modern sets from 8th edition forward spanning 21 years of history. The game is like 31 years old at this point. 31 yeah, 31 years old at this point, and, you know, the majority of it, you know, like two-thirds of Magic's history is in the modern format. Uh, in recent months, the modern metagame has already been through some changes, including the introduction of Surveillance Lands, the Dominance of Cascade decks, the Ban of Violent Outburst, the Surprising Powerhouse that is Leyline of the Guild Pack, and the introduction of Slick Shot Showoff. However... All of these developments pale in comparison to the impact of Modern Horizons 3. Bolstered by a new set, the metagame of the Pro Tour breakdown is as follows. So we have uh, Bant Nadu being 20% of the metagame, twice the number of decks, and then some of the second most uh, brought deck or being played deck in Ruby Storm which is 9.5% of the metagame. You have Jeskai Control at 9.1, which kind of makes sense because we saw this deck kind of emerging and uh, kind of just being a very solid deck choice to bring. Uh, we have Mono Black Necro, which is kind of the you know Soul Spike, Necro Dominance, like Grief kind of deck where you can kind of uh, grief your opponent, you know, scam them and whatnot. And with like uh, drawing cards with like Necro Dominance and like Soul Spike and things like that, you're able to kind of keep the card advantage going and refilling your hand and then also getting to burn your opponent in the process. So just a really neat deck. Uh, you have Eldrazi Tron. So Tron usually is a deck that overperforms at the Pro Tour, even though I think for a lot of people, it's like a deck that when you take it to RCQs, when you take it to like modern 1K, 2K, 5Ks, 10Ks, whatever, you know, tournaments that Tron doesn't really perform all that well. But in seemingly in the hands of some of like the best players in the world or, you know, the players playing the best magic at this time, uh, Tron ends up play, uh, being very well positioned. While we had a metagame at the last Pro Tour, at Pro Tour uh, Lord of the Rings, we had Scam being by far and away the most played deck in the field. And uh, Tron, I don't think, was really anywhere to be seen. It was kind of like a dark horse of the event. And there was three of them in the top eight, uh, two in the semifinals, and, you know, the runner-up at the Pro Tour. So, you know, we could we see Eldrazi Tron kind of mimic the success of, like, the normal, like, mono-green Tron decks? has yet to be seen but i mean they got a ton of new cards to kind of help them combat the metagame as a whole so you know we could see Eldrazi tron you know putting multiple copies in the top eight and following on its uh predecessor mono green tron going further we have four color nadu essentially making nadu uh, to over 25 percent of the of the field total between the bant nadu deck which is, i think is the one that most people are kind of familiar with what's going on four color nadu as far as i know like orcish bowmaster is kind of like the big addition it's kind of a way that you can help fight against like mono black necro where they're getting to draw cards just guy could control it's just like a good value creature that they kind of have to deal with um and then of course like their cantrips and stuff like that help trigger the nadu and whatnot uh, we have Boros Energy, which, like, the Boros midrange decks have looked really sweet. Jeskai Wizards, like, uh, with Tamiyo plus Flame of Noor. Like, Flame of Noor is just a sweet card. You know, me and me and Randy, my co-host on the uh, Casual Spikes podcast, you know, we talked about Flame of Noor just kind of being a, just a really good card. Like, a really fun card to play where it just feels like the appropriate power level for modern. Like, deal five to something, shatter an artifact, draw two cards, and if you control a wizard, you get to pick two of the three. And, you know, being like Tamiyo, where you can just, like, draw your card for turn, and then you're going to, you know, Flame of Anor to draw some extra cards, and then, like, deal with, like, a Shieldred or something like that, you know, to essentially, you know, make sure that it's not ruining your day anymore. And then you get to flip Tamiyo. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And the fact that Tamiyo is a wizard, too, makes uh, Flame of Anor, like, the ability to have... Uh, have two modes selected is uh, really neat too. Uh, Mono Black Grief, uh, not dead after all. Grief, this is kind of like the thing that we're used to. It looks like they're uh, cutting uh, red altogether, excuse me, and just going uh, straight Mono Black. Who knows? Uh, I'd have to check like deck lists when we officially get them uh, after the Swiss round start, which will be probably in 16 to 20, well, probably like uh, 20 hours from now, I would say, uh, at least from when I'm recording this. Um, but we'll have to see kind of the differences there. Just guy dress down. I think this is like kind of like a just guy control deck in a way. I've seen like a few lists that are playing like null drifter dress down whatnot to, uh, basically make sure the null drifter kind of like stays around and you get to draw like three cards, three cards for five mana and you get a four, four annihilator one. 
pretty sweet to me. Gruel Eldrazi is like this through the breach, Emerald Aeons torn deck. Uh, something we've seen kind of as old as magic. Uh, you can put in like other titans and things like that and whatnot. Um, but that's generally the game plan is just get to through the breach, Emrakul, you know, annihilate your permanents, hit you for 15, either kill you or you have like nothing left. And unless you're Brian Bronduin, you can never actually like win the game from there. Uh, and that's actually not a good thing for Brian Bronduin. That's probably a video that we'll make for another day. Just like how unlucky someone could be. So just remember if you're ever unlucky, uh, there's like uh, Brian Bronduin versus, uh, oh shoot freak mtg uh brad nelson in like legacy and uh pretty sure brian bronduin like annihilates all of brad's permanents and then just needs to find like a threat for like sneak attack this is like way back in the day of legacy and uh basically like cast how many cantrips looks at so many cards whatnot fetches everything like that and uh can't seem to get it done so we'll probably do a breakdown of that just because like that match is uh a lot of fun to watch i just love watching legacy uh, down below is the total metagame breakdown. So we got up to like Gruul Eldrazi here. So we have 11 decks in the format that have at least six decks or more. And we have eight decks here that are, uh, seeing at least 10 copies being played in double digits. Uh, you know, and aside from, you know, like every pro tour, I think we kind of talk about how like the number one deck being played is just so much more of the metagame than any of the other decks that like if you just took like the top you know performing deck the most broad deck to the format it actually looks like a very diverse and healthy metagame where you have like six decks between you know what would be the first and third deck and then you have like nine between the the first and fourth one ten between the first and fifth one and sixth one you know but nadu just kind of being the bird person that it is just absolutely, you know, being the deck that the players are smitten by and want to actually bring to the event. So, uh, some other notable decks, Murktide, five copies, uh, just outside of this, you know, uh, two and a half percent of the metagame, you know, Esper Gorios is a deck that, you know, when, you know, we had the violent outburst band was kind of the, the deck that people went and played Gogori Yogmoth with four copies. Uh, I've seen kind of some evolutions of this deck playing some very powerful enchantments. You know, we have like the fixed birthing pod type card, um, that only looks at like seven cards or whatever. Uh, Chthonian nightmare as well has been performing very well in Yogmoth, and has just overall changed kind of like the texture of the deck. I think for an event like this, I think if you could play any deck that you wanted to, uh, you probably play like the, the, the top three decks like Nadu, Ruby, or Storm, and just kind of even like Mono Black Necro actually might be kind of like one of my decks to watch like this weekend, just because I think that's a, a really fun deck to. It's a really fun deck to play, even though it is kind of like simple for the most part. You either scam your opponent and then like play a necro and then you just draw a bunch of cards and then just like keep the cards going. Uh Boros Burn, Is It Wizards, Gruel Prowess, all decks that we're kinda used to. Living end at three copies. Uh OG Grief, Rakdos Grief right here at uh twentieth with two copies. Uh just guy chant. I hope we get to see something like this in the uh um, in the metagame or on camera or whatnot. Hopefully they do well. Uh, two Amulet Titan, two Merfolk, and uh, from Mill down, we have just one copy of these decks. And look, the Lone Grix is Shadow Player. This person's bold. I wish that I could be them and register this for, like, the Pro Tour. Um, but they must have, like, an idea on, like, something that's going on uh, in a, in a metagame where we're looking at Nadu and then Ruby Storm and whatnot. Historically speaking, uh, the Grixis shadow decks or like just shadow decks in general, just having a really good matchup against the, uh, against like storm and things like that. But, uh, I don't know. These storm decks are a little bit more resilient than they are back in the day. Uh, so all modern constructed deck lists for the tournament will be published on the pro tour modern horizons three event page on Friday, June 28th at the beginning of round four gameplay, approximately 2 PM central European time. Until then you can find short summaries of the most played archetypes below. So, uh, I'll kind of go through some of these really briefly. Uh, Ban Nadu, which by 49 players, over 20% of the metagame. It's a brand new combo strategy that tries to assemble Nadu, Winged Wisdom, Shuko. 
And Shuko targets your creatures for zero mana, allowing it to trigger Nadu's ability. And then with Springheart and Antuku, you hit lands, you then make a 1-1 that can also be targeted twice. And you eventually get to go through your whole deck and then win the game with Thassa's Oracle or Loop Endurances to like just make an infinite number of 1-1s because you're just going to more than likely get to keep making 1-1s. And you know if you have enough lands in your graveyard and what have you, uh, you're just like never going to miss. Uh, same like, like if you just play like fetch lands and stuff as well. Uh, I guess at some point you will kind of like run out of life, but you know, it is what it is. I think that they play the um, whatever dude the the gain life and then you gain an energy so like you can you know gain a life whatever do 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 and then like sack your fetch lands and then you know you're just going to like get that life back so you just kind of keep looping through. Uh, Ruby Storm. The honestly personally the deck that I would probably play. Uh, just if you're willing to play through some sideboard hate, uh, and really with a deck like this, like normally even if people play like one or two pieces of like sideboard hate, you can find ways to kind of like win the game if they're not pressuring you. So Ruby Storm is a new combo strategy based around Moon Medallion and Raul Monsoon Mage from Modern Horizons 3. With either of these on the battlefield, Pyretic Rituals and Desperate Rituals cost one mana, aka Dark Rituals, and unlocking huge mana boost. Uh, with the cost of Reckless Impulse and Ren's Resolve is also reduced to allow you to rapidly sift through your deck and the plan is to cast numerous spells in a single turn at a reduced cost, do it all over again with Passive Flames and finish the job with a lethal grape shot. Some of these decks going in between playing something like uh, like Pass and Flames in the main, playing like Wish, so then you can go and get Grape Shot from your sideboard so you don't have to play one in your deck, plus some other things that will kind of help you to push through you know, your game plan and everything, where if you're able to cast enough things, but your opponent plays the ring, you can play Alchemist Gambit and then go and get something like a... Well, I guess you can go get Alchemist Gambit from your sideboard, and then on the next turn, you can try to go off and cast a bunch of spells. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is if you have two wishes, you go and get the Alchemist Gambit, you take an extra turn, and then you go and get the... Uh, you go and get the empty of the warrens, you make a ton of tokens, and then you untap, and then you attack for lethal. So it was like a way that you can like do this. So that's going to be the normal ways that this deck wins. Uh, Realm Monsoon Mage is absolutely insane. Uh, Jeskai Control features spot removal, counter magic, card draw sweepers, and powerful new Flage Titan of Fire's Fury. And I just want you to know, like when I brought this up on the Casual Spikes podcast, I said that Flage has to have a home somewhere. I think that it, it is a very good card. You know, I think Boros Burn is kind of like the floor of this card. You know, I think it was pretty good. And it turns out that I was wrong in even giving it some credit because it deserves its flowers right now. While it, it would seem like it was a Titan that was kind of, you know, under... I think underestimated and people played it and like, wow, this card is very good. Um, I'm now wondering what the heck's Cro what Crocs's problem is. Like the fact that it, like it discards cards and sometimes deals damage. Maybe it's just better if it always deals damage and if it costs it one more mana. Uh, so like you can play Flage, uh, destabilize, win the game. The deck also exploits the energy package from Modern Horizons Three with tune the narrative. You know, getting two energy and drawing a card for one mana. Galvanic Discharge being essentially a one mana Harness Lightning, but I don't think Harness Lightning can actually target Planeswalkers. Wrath of Skies, where you can get X energy and then pay any amount of energy and destroy each artifact creature enchantment with mana value less than or equal to the amount of energy paid this way a feature that distinguishes Jeskai control from other Jeskai decks they use at least three copies of the one ring or memory deluge to net card advantage and support its control plan which we all know that the one ring is probably one of the best cards that you can have in your deck uh not only with it being super expensive but the fact that it draws a ridiculous amount of cards mono black necro Mono Black Necro features cheap, efficient interaction to trade resources in the early turns before refilling with Necro Dominance. Sounding a lot like Scam here. Uh, unlike the original Necropotence, this enchantment actually draws a card, so you can almost double your life total with Shieldred. Uh, with Shieldred in play and you have like a Necro Dominance, you gain one life per card instead of losing a life per card. Um, with uh, Shieldred of the Apocalypse, while sculpting the perfect five-card hand, there's also the opportunity to cast spells in between drawing cards and discarding the hand size, so you can pay an exorbitant amount of life, pitch loads of cards to March of Wretched Sorrow or Soul Spike, pass the turn with a higher life total than you started with. Uh, that's even after drawing a bunch of cards and not necessarily having like shielded. I mean, you could. I love how too like they want you to like read the card and everything, and they put the Phyrexian version of Shieldred. Although I think like ninety percent of the player base knows what uh, Shieldred the Apocalypse does. 
Um, Eldrazi Tron. Eldrazi Tron exploits Ugin's Labyrinth, which is the new soul land that I cannot bring up on the screen for Modern Horizons 3. You can imprint Devourer of Destiny or All is Dust, which are seven cost cards that give you access to two mana on turn one. Along with Eldrazi, Trempo, El Eldrazi Temple and the Trio of Urza lands, the deck ramps enormous amounts of mana of colorless mana early on, and all Eldrazi decks sink their mana into Karn the Great Creator, the One Ring, or Kozilex Command, which Kozilex Command is pretty crazy, and the fact that like two of the three new cards that they pointed out i actually can't like hover over and bring up so that's pretty neat uh four color nadu this is basically banned nadu splashing for bowmaster or thoughtsies fascinatingly many nadu decks at the pro tour have shaved thassa's oracle and are instead employing endurance loops as their win condition this feels like a, a matt nass kind of uh uh innovation so like uh real quick story back when like crack clan ironworks was one of like, one of the best decks to play in the format uh there were some decks that were just playing emrakul and uh Matt Nass basically said that like the players playing Emrakul don't know how to loop the like pirate spell bomb to like kill your opponent and you know at least pirate spell bomb is like a playable like magic card in this deck where you know people playing like the Eldrazi uh you know Emrakul like is good you can then win the game and close out the game with an Emrakul but you know that's essentially like something you do on magic online because the loop can take a while on magic online like in paper you end up just looping like pirate spell bomb so it, that just it feels like a matt nass kind of thing uh the ones in four color nadu are easiest to explain if your library consists of four lands and you have bestowed a spring heart and tuku on both endurance and orcish bowmaster then you can uh target four insects with shuko use the four lands to create copies of bowmaster and endurance sacrifice them to sylvan safekeeper and have endurance return them to your library you can loop this infinite orcish bowmaster copies deals infinite damage so actually pretty cool uh, i'm interested to actually see this over the bant version then uh Boros Energy, mid-range deck that is mostly energy mechanic, brought by Modern Horizons 3, with Guide of Souls, Amped Raptor, Galvanic Discharge, Unstable Amulet, and a Static Prison. These are a powerful suite of cards that you can spend your energy in the most fruitful way possible for the game at hand, while the early drop creatures put considerable pressure on your opponent. Uh, we'll go look at, uh, like, Wizards and stuff like that. So, the last uh, deck that we have, multi like, I guess, uh, double-digit players register. So just like Jeskai Control, Jeskai Wizards features uh, Flage, Titan, of Fire's Fury, the Energy Package of Tune the Narrative, Galvanic Discharge, and Wrath the Skies. The feature that distinguishes Jeskai Wizards from the other decks is that it runs Tamiyo, Inquisitive Student, which is not uh, highlighted here, Snapcaster Mage, awesome magic card, uh, to enable Flame Odenor. On turn four, you could cast Tamiyo and immediately transform into a Planeswalker by drawing cards with Flame of Nor, which is a powerful line of play. In our Planeswalker form, Tamiyo has powerful defensive abilities and easiest to reach game winning ultimate, which I wish that we could then uh, see on here, but you know, it's just not coming up. So uh, I'll let you guys read the rest of it, but that's kind of like my two cents and everything on it. So down here, uh, on the whole, the Pro Tour metagame is dominated by combo strategies. Last week in the analysis of the first Magical Line events from Modern Horizons 3, Ruby Storm and Banna Do had already seemed to be very promising, which is, you know, by the fact that people were like, it's going to be Bird Summer, and then Storm's like, hold my beer. I'm going to show people that I, I'm making a dramatic entrance to try to ruin, like, Nadu's day. Uh, after an additional week of testing, these two decks uh, are on the top of the Pro Tour metagame. Between Bant, Four Color, and Devoted Nadu, nearly 26% of the field will try to assemble the combo of Nadu and Shuko. With Ruby Storm and other combo strategies also being well re represented, many games at the Pro Tour might end as early as turn 3. However, Modern, Horizon, or Modern has been evolving rapidly. For example, established archetypes such as Living In fell by the wayside as players tried to break the new cards. Meanwhile, new archetypes like Mono Black Necro uh, rose in prominence. But the biggest development is the emergence of the large variety of Boros, Jeskai, and Mardu decks that exploit the new energy cards. The Modern Horizons 3, from Modern Horizons 3, along with Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury. Nearly 25% of the field registered one of these decks, which is almost as much as the Nadu contingent. To put this into perspective, let's take a closer look at the most played cards from the new set. So, just a few of like the, the most played cards. Uh, Nadu, the most registered deck in the format, is the has the third most copies in the deck. Uh, none on the sideboard, so uh, we have all the players are smart and played f all four copies in their deck, or what have you. Uh, Galvanic Discharge, 268 copies total, with all with 268 of them being in the main deck. Flage, 211 in the main, 53 in the sideboard for 264 total. You have Springheart and Tuku at 232 copies, all in the main. Cosine to Memory, 20 of them in the main. Uh, yeah, 20 of them in the main, 170 in the sideboard. 
which I think might be the most, yeah, like the most played cyborg card from Modern Horizons 3 by a, a country mile. Uh, Wrath of Skies, 130 in the main. Tune the Narrative, 162 copies all on the main. Static Prison, most of them being in the sideboard, uh, but there are some seen in, uh, in the main board. Raul and uh, Ruby Medallion and Amped Raptor, both in 92 and so on. So uh, pretty good numbers. We have one, two, uh, one, two three four five six seven eight we have eight different cards from modern horizons 3 that have over 100 copies uh, in their deck and then uh even more that have you know are in the high you know double digits too so you know overall i, I would say pretty successful for uh, modern horizons 3 and then you just see like all these other cards and stuff that are actually in the format as well in terms of our card count, the most important new additions are Galvanic Discharge, Flage, Titan's Fury. Both have found their way into decks like Jeskai Control, Boros Energy, Jeskai Wizards, Jeskai Dressdown, Mardu Energy, and various others. In addition, many Ruby Storm decks use Flage in their sideboard to handle Dranith Magistrate and to provide an alternate route to victory. At the same time, various Girl Prowess decks have adopted Galvanic Discharge as well. Uh, Galvanic Discharge is the most played new energy card overall. It is basically Lightning Bolt for creatures and planeswalkers with additional flexibility. When combined with other energy cards, it becomes similar to Unholy Heat and its ability to take down enormous creatures. And when it burns a smaller creature, you can store the energy for Wrath of Skies later on or just for a future Galvanic Discharge as well. Yet many Pro Tour competitors anticipated the trend as Sun Cleanser started to appear as a spicy answer to prevent opponents from accumulating energy counters. Flage is a twist on Uro and Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Uro is currently banned in Modern, and Croxa won Pro Tour Lord of the Rings last year. I think it was like one or two copies like in the main. It's like saying that it won a Pro Tour is the same way that like Robert Horry wins a uh, wins an NBA championship. Like, sure, like he hits like one good shot. They call him Big Shot Bob for a reason. But, you know, like Croxa hits like one shot in like the whole tournament, and they're like, yeah, like he's, he's a winner. It's like, no, he's like right place, right time, and then like playing his role, like doing the thing he's supposed to do. Not that special. Uh, so uh, one Pro Tour Lord of the Rings last year so there's some major historical pedigree compared to Croxus 2 mana discard effect Flage front side is a 3 mana lightning helix as typically better stabilizes the board extends the game and can be uh, can be escaped to dominate the battlefield and subsequent damage race essentially uh, Flage is the like cool hip version of uh, Inferno Titan and uh, I'm here for it because you know turns out all Inferno Titan needed to put on it was gain 3 life and it would, would be a playable magic card again uh, Nadu has enabled a brand new combo strategy as a clear front runner for the Pro Tour by itself as a 3 4 and doesn't die to Lightning Bolt and doesn't die to a uh, Galvanic Blat or you know Galvanic Discharge if uh, you haven't sorted up energy. Draws cards when your opponent tries to kill it, yet uh, combined with uh, things that target your own creatures, zero mana like Shuko or Outrider Encore, you can go off and win the game on the spot. Due to its wording, Nadu's ability applies twice for each creature you control, not twice in total. So every creature you control will effectively yield two free cards, putting any lands from on the onto the battlefield untapped. And with Springheart uh, is Nadu's partner in crime, when it's on the battlefield, every land you hit as it turns into a 1-1 one, one insect and also allows you to uh, create a copy of it. You can pay two mana. Uh, several players of the Pro Tour create infinite copies of Arboreal Grazer, combining Arboreal Grazer... Combining a bestowed Arboreal Grazer with Amulet Vigor and Semic Growth Chamber, you can just end up making infinite land drops and, uh, you know, just getting to make, you know, infinite mana, essentially, with enough amulets... Yeah, with enough amulets, you get to uh, make infinite mana plus infinite grazers, which then, you know, make infinite 1-1s one as well. Or, you know, you can get to a point where um, you can just play stuff off of it. We'll have to see, because uh, I think after thinking about it for two seconds, I don't think I have, like, quite the idea of uh, what this is going to do besides, you know, getting to just make infinite copies of, like, a Royal Grazer. Um, energy cards, better... Energy cards get better the more of them that you have. Running multiple energy sources allows you to spend energy. Resources are the best way to handle the game. Galvanic Discharge is the most played energy card. Wrath of Skies, Tune the Narrative, Static Prison, Amp Raptor, Unstable Amulet, Guide of Souls from Modern Horizons 3 seeing considerable play as well. Wrath of Skies in particular, Pride Jess Guy with a cheap sweeper because you can just pay two mana and then you know pay the energy that you stored up. Rather than, you know, and then you could pay X if you need it to actually wrath the board of certain things. Uh, it also lines up particularly well against Urza Saga. As a result, Skies is an excellent answer to Ban Nadu. Moreover, curving Tune the Narrative into Wrath of Skies means that you have enough energy for a massive sweeper as early as turn two or three, which uh, you know essentially means that you could have you know on turn two you could sweep for two mana, which you know might be okay. 
Uh, aesthetic Prism, Amp Raptor, Guided Souls aren't generally seen in Jeskai decks, but they're included regularly in the Boros Energy decks and the Mardu decks. Static Prism is also a popular sideboard card for Ruby Storm, as allows them to answer cards like Damping Sphere for single mana. Uh, Rel, Monsoon Mage, Ruby Medallion are also high on the list. The most played Modern Horizons 3 cards, and they are found on only one archetype, Ruby Storm. There are essentially four of us in that deck. Combining these cost-reducing two drops with Pyretic Ritual and Reckless Impulse, this combo strategy can win on turn three, but they lied because it can also do it on turn two and there's multiple different ways that can do it on turn two uh going further you know they're going to talk about the eldrazi decks here the final set of cards i like to highlight are the new eldrazi cards and devour destiny ugin's labyrinth they can buy a land that taps for two mana you can sink into an enormous Kozilex command these cards have enabled a novel eldrazi tron gruel eldrazi team eldrazi builds all play a bit differently. Eldrazi Tron builds up loads of mana. Gruul exploits through the breach. And Team Eldrazi is a more aggressive in nature. But all of them showcase the power of the all-devouring Eldrazi. Partly due to the prominence of Devourer of Destiny, uh, Cosign of Memory has become a very popular sideboard card, which counters a triggered ability or a colorless spell, so it pulls double duty against Storm as well. Uh, or you can stifle your own trigger from Flage and... Uh, you know, just make sure that you get your Lightning Helix effect, plus you get to keep the Titan around as well. Uh, in fact, the most played cyber card from the Modern Horizons 3 is the, uh, whatever it is, the Cosign to Memory. Showing that there are many suitable answers for all the new threats in Modern, that looks completely fresh, and I'm excited to see what decks end up in the standings at the end of the tournament. And then we have uh, Frank Carson's, like, Road to World Championship 30. You know, going over uh, one of the World Championship decks from 2008. And then finally, you have your broadcast team for the event. It looks like Paul Cheon getting replaced by uh, Frank Karsten because, unfortunately, he was laid off. And even though uh, even though I'm a big Paul Cheon fan, you know, Frank Karsten is just kind of a good inclusion. Of course, uh, the usual cast of casters and stuff that we have here, uh, I'm sure Will Hall maybe will show up uh, at some point during this too. Um, but, yeah, that is Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3 overall thoughts and opinions kind of things that we need to kind of think about you know uh historically speaking from like the last few pro tours slash mythic championships uh tron has actually performed very well there's been some decks that were kind of dark horses in the format that really weren't you know played as much as some of the most played decks in the format that have found their way doing very well or making top eight of the event uh in the case of like tron actually making the top eight you know, putting three copies in the top eight of the last modern pro tour and then being so, so close one game away from being a pro tour champion, uh, while also being a pro tour champion in, you know, the Hogak summer format and, uh, even beating human or maybe not in the, in the Hogak pro tour, but, uh, you know, Tron actually maybe it was in both that pro tour and the, uh, the humans pro tour. Cause I, I believe, uh, they also beat humans like in the finals of their, or no, I'm getting my things mixed up. Anyway, Tron is like outperformed, you know, probably it's expectation. And for Nadu being the most played deck in the format, being over a quarter of the metagame, uh, statistically speaking, with the amount of copies that are in the field, like at least one or two of them should make the top eight. However, that's kind of where it, it lands because like Hogak was like the most played deck in its pro tour that it was legal for. And it only put one copy in the top eight and it lost in the quarterfinals. Uh, I can't remember exactly the last Mythic Championship that was modern, but in the last Pro Tour, we had Scam. That put one copy in the top eight, but that is all it needed to actually just win the event. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if Nadu can break the trend of the most played deck in the format, you know, having, you know, overall just kind of a disappointing success in terms of the numbers that were played. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting to see, you know, what comes from this Pro Tour. Uh, Modern Horizons 3 Limited looks amazing. I've seen people draft it. I've seen sealed events, what have you. And it just looks like a lot of fun. And I wish I could get my hands on this set and play it a lot more than uh, what I'll probably be able to get to play of it. So, you know, overall, this is shaping up to be a great event. Modern Horizons 3, I'm sure, is going to knock it clean out of the park in terms of like the pre the presentation the matches of magic being played you know the players involved and whatnot it's just going to be it's going to be a fun time and i enjoy i enjoy watching the pro tours i especially enjoy watching the modern and pioneer pro tours and i extremely extremely look forward to just kind of diving into this weekend and really just you know engrossing myself in in the format and just seeing kind of 
you know, the aftermath of the event as well and what ends up happening. So that's going to be me in this video, another, a uh, real long one for you. So if you made it to the end, I greatly appreciate you and, you know, supporting me and my content and everything like that. Of course, subscribe to the channel, ring notification bell, so you know in future videos I get posted from me as uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, we're going to wrap up the Pro Tour 2 at the end of the uh you know, at the end of the week, once we kind of figure out how this is all going to play out, looks like a great event. I hope you all uh, enjoy the video. I hope you all enjoy the event and everything and just everything that magic brings, because uh, this game is awesome. <laughs> this is like one of my favorite games of all time, like no doubt. So, but yeah, that's going to do it for me in this video. Hope you all enjoyed it and I hope to see you all in the next one.